Welcome to Balanced Life with Debbie Carlin Boyle, conversations connecting to a healthier you, the show that gives you all the latest and greatest health and wellness information to inspire you to live a life of balance and joy. Debbie Carlin Boyle is a health and nutrition coach, personal trainer, and fitness instructor who helps her clients live in balance with everything that feeds us in addition to the food on our plate. Please welcome your host, Debbie Carlin Boyle. Hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome on this fall afternoon. I welcome you to my show. This is Balanced Life with me, your host, Debbie Carlin Boyle. I create conversations that connect to a healthier you. And I want to invite you to do just that and to connect with us today. So to do that, you can do a couple of things. One, you can go to my Facebook page, which is Fit by Design, otherwise it, known as Balanced Life. And I'm streaming live on my Facebook page right now. And you can make a comment anytime or ask a question during the show. Uh, the other way is to call in, and we'd love to hear from you today. So our number here is 323-843-2826, because you may want to call in. I'm going to tell you why right now. So today, we're literally going to nourish our souls. And how are we going to do that? How would it feel to have the tools that you need to tap into your intuition and be able to break through all those barriers that are standing between you and your full potential? So my guest today is Naria Kim, Kim Camilla, a clairvoyant coach, energy muse, astrologer, and a leader in the mystic arts. Naria, Naria, yeah, I'm saying it wrong. That's okay. Um, AKA Kim Love Muse yes. has been called one of the nation's most highly esteemed and respected mediums. Kim quickly earned her reputation as Hollywood's secret psychic. In her soul sessions, Naria, which is what she's called now, works with people in developing and managing their power and creativity while clarity to life solutions giving clarity to life solutions. Naria has been featured in several magazines such as People, Women's Own, Clio Magazine, and the film My Date with Drew, and has appeared as a reoccurring guest on Hot 92.3 and Latino 96.3, a contributing editor for Refinery29 and other columns where she writes on different topics as well. Naria does public speaking in intimate venues, doing informal talks, workshops, and meditations. She has been referenced in several known authors' books with full chapters on her and is listed as the top 100 astrologers in America. So to help us better understand our place in the universe, will you please welcome my guest today, Naria, to the show. Thank you. I'm just annihilating your name, aren't I? Thank you. Welcome. It's Naria. Naria. Like Maria. 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 People like have Maria to get, Naria. People have to get used to it. I have to put it. the accent on the right it's place. Okay. Well, welcome. Thank you. That sounds and like I did a lot, doesn't you it? You <laughs> have quite the resume, it's and it's impressive. Thank so you. thank you. Thank for um, coming in your, I know you're busy right now because we're going to talk about what kind of time of uh, uh, time of the year it is that things are changing in our universe and why it's keeping you psychically busy. But mm -hmm. before we do, I like to hear a little bit about your background and how you got into what you're doing today and uh, just telling us where you're from and when you first realized the abilities that you possessed and were able to help others with it. So okay. where are you from? Originally, I'm, I was born in New York City. Okay. And I grew up upstate, so on a lake where it was all, you know, nat nature and uh, creatures. So I, I grew up close to earth, I want to say. And nature, yeah, mm -hmm. having a good absorption of that. Yes, and I, um, I actually, I lived in a beautiful place. I had great homes, but I, I moved around from home to home. So I was a foster kid that got moved around, and I think that has a lot to do with the way I developed as well. Because I knew at three, it's it, the only way I can explain it is it, it's a knowing. And it, what did it come? I I remember reading a little bit about your background in that you knew who was coming to the door before the doorbell even rang. 
Yeah, and it was weird. Like everything yeah. was weird because it wasn't a normal thing at that time. Now it's a you know it's normal. Yeah. Now, now it's, it's a given. It's been a lot of years, but. Mm -hmm. How did that feel at the time? Was that, you were so young, that may have seemed normal then, or? It all seemed normal to me. Yes. But it, because I was in such a weird world, trying to adjust to the world, basically, yes. as a kid, and then as a foster kid, and then trying to get a sense of my belonging with having these abilities. So I had all this information coming in, and not, and, and not really any guidance, except yeah. for the guidance that I, needed to listen to. And at what point, at what age, do you, did you, like, the light bulb go off? Was it meeting your biological parents that helped you to realize that, oh, I come from an intuitive family that have these, you know, abilities? Or was it before that? No, I knew before. Yeah. I knew I knew way before, but I didn't know but yeah, but what I knew. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you didn't know why you were having these. I didn't know um, how, yeah. why or how I knew it, everything. And also I, I was unimpressed, if that makes any sense. I thought it was normal. Yeah. So it didn't strike you that you had mm -hmm. to do anything with it. Right. So at what point did, in um, your young age did you realize, I have a gift and I can help myself and others with this gift? Uh, well, at three, I knew I had a gift. But at what age to, did, that I could help people? Yeah. That was later on because I had to do, I did so much studying and, and so much in, you still do the inner work. I would say um, probably into my 30s. Okay. So for that period of time, you were really manifesting what you could do to help others with Digging. What? Yeah. Digging in. Yeah. Researching, reading, searching, you know, all of that. And funny. And then you've made a big time career out of this, really. It's a, it is a life time's work like a, a, a calling if you will that you, to help others by what you're you have absorbed and, and were born with basically right reluctantly I did friends uh, I went into design so I went to school for uh, design and worked for Ralph Lauren for a while design is still something that I love because I feel like being a psychic is really just channeling just as an actor would just as a singer would we're channels and if we open up if we if we figure out who we are and what our channel is what we'd like to bring in i feel like that's one of the keys to your happiness because if you know who you are which was you know i had a huge identity crisis as a kid being moved around mm, and then I psychic bet. on top of it was like yeah double I don't know whammy who I am, yeah you poor I thing am, but where am i yeah um but it was necessary for whatever reason. Um, but I, I mean, so but you went to school for design. You, you are obviously creative as well, yes. and and you know that design plays into our psychic, to our psyche in terms of where our creativity comes from. From you, you, there, it, it comes from many places. I think not just from oh, I think this will look good here. So you can help people actually decorate their homes from a logical point of view, right? From a spiritual point of view, more or less. Logical or spirit? What do you mean by logical? Just in something that makes sense, it's yeah. grounded. Yeah, yeah, from the inside out. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, 100%, which is fun because then I get to like touch, some, you know, when you work a lot in the abstract, when you work in in the psychic world and you live in the supernatural world so there's a lot of that um sorry and so working with people whether it's homes or their home themselves it's <laughs> the um yes it's as long as we can work to where i can access them in a sense where they can, because I can access people anyway. Yes. I mean, I could just go in. It's more of a laser. Oh, we have a phone call already. Really? <laughs> yes. Wow. We do. <laughs> Let's um, hold for a second. We'll take the call. Hello, okay. caller. Are you there? Fun. Oh, hi, Debbie. It's Lizzie. I'm oh, Liz. hi, Lizzie. How <laughs> are you? She's a girlfriend of mine who listens to my show. I know on your website because it's not loading again. Okay, are you are you at ubngo.com, Liz? Yep. 
Okay. Yep. So we're going to ask our engineer here, Kurt, how are we doing? It's not loading. You're cutting out all the time. Okay. So, um, Lizzie, go to my Facebook page, which okay. is Fit by Design. Right. And it will come up as Balance Life, and we're, we are there. We are on there. So which page do I go to? So fit by Design. Fit by Design. You'll see me, and it will say Balance Life. Balance Life. Okay. All right. I'll let you get back. I'll okay. You, All right. Call in later, it. Liz. Call in. Listen and call yeah. in if you want. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for helping thanks. us out bye. here. All right. Bye. So, Kurt, are we up and running? Yeah, I have it up and running on. Hold on. I'm pulling it right now. Okay. So there's something going on there. All right. So I want to get back to so you so you have this design background and you're still in New York or do you end up coming what what drives you to come to Los Angeles? Well, I just want to back up for a second. Okay. In in um growing up, it was all about me trying to find magic. It wasn't like okay. I was like, 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 I'm psychic and I need to find out and study. There was no conscious sort of drive there. So I, it was more about beauty, Discovery. magic, uncovering. So I go to school for design. I live downtown on Prince Street, New York, which was great. And then I start having reoccurring dreams of 9-11. And so, um, and what year are we in now? This is pre nine eleven, obviously. Two years prior. Okay. Oh my goodness. So I think I'm crazy. <laughs> so you had dreams of the actual incident of the. I had dreams of tanks in the street. I had dreams that I was in fatigues and I was helping people back into a bombed site. I saw helicopters with men coming down with black armbands on. So I knew that we were going military. Yeah. Um, I packed an army bag with like army boots and army clothes and weapons behind my bed in case. That was for real, not for part real. of the dream. That yeah. was for real. Okay. And so Whoa. I went to see a shaman and he asked me why. He's like, why are you here? And I said, because I think I'm crazy. Uh. I pretty much am having the same dream over and over every night, the same thing. Wow. And it was wide angle shots where it was just a big tank. Now, I know a lot of people um, did see this coming in different ways. They painted it. So the part of the collective that was woke, uh, you know, woken up, they were being moved. There was a lot to do. It's a lot to do with, yes, 9-11 happened, but a lot of us had to be moved to certain areas. So yes. I believe that spiritually we are just picked up by the scruff of the neck, by God, by the by divinity, and just put where we're needed. Wow. And I love that. That's mm -hmm. a that's great what I way to like. think of it. Yeah. And believe me, you're down on your knees before you make any of these decisions. You're not like just flippantly like Yeah, just oh, yeah, oh I, I have a feeling there. I'll just go. You yeah, know, you're on your There's knees. There's a lot of like, things to think about. Hundred percent when you're being pushed in that direction. Mm -hmm. So you're having these dreams and did it make you want to leave New York or get what is it that is that what brought you to LA? Uh, yeah, that was. I mean, I w when I saw my shaman, Gypsy, his his name. He's a big influence. He basically said, "You don't belong in New York anymore. You have to go." And he said, "I can't tell you where you're going. You're completely accurate on what you're saying. I can't tell you where you're moving to, but you won't be alone." And so I put things in storage. I also worked with Eric Francis. He's another astrologer. He's great. Because um, I, I, I seek out certain, I work with a lot of different people. I don't just come to conclusions on my own. I right. check in with colleagues, you know. I like which that. Which I think is important. Yeah, that's important. I was just thinking that. Uh, especially when you think you're crazy from the time you're a child. <laughs> yeah, you need some balance, checks and balances in that sure, respect. Because you're, you're not. You're yeah. growing up and people yeah. are saying, I thought you were insane and that it all came true. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so I ended up moving to L.A. I put things in storage and and took the leap, you know. Wow. And it was a And a when you took the leap, at that point, did you get into astrology or were you, um, like all the things that I talked about in the introduction, come all at once or did things grow from another? Like, um, was it first, what was it first that you were able to manifest? First here? it was I wasn't going to drive. Okay. 
<laughs> which is kind of funny. Um, no, well, all of that knowledge I had been studying for a long time, and friends kept saying, do you something. should do this. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, no, no. I'm already like an outcast. No, thank you. Yeah. I'm just going to design. And so friends were like, no, you really should do this. And so I started in New York a little bit, but more behind closed doors. I kept it very private. Mm -hmm. Also, the word psychic, it has such a bad sort of connotation to it. That's why I don't call myself a psychic anymore. I'm tr psychic just means um, psyche. So it's more of what people have put on it. Yes. And so because language is changing going into 2020, words are dropping out. So there are words that are going to change. If if I would call myself anything truly, I would probably say mystic okay. from the beginning. Yeah. Um, just because of my connection to the earth, just because of uh, just how much of the supernatural world I was connected to and had to learn how to navigate. Right. So and that becomes that that mystic is is almost a universal way of of saying that those powers, those yeah. things that you are tapped Priestess, into. Priestess, yeah. mystic. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to walk around saying that of course you're trying to fit in and yeah. be modern. And intuitive, but, <laughs> but intuitive, um, you know, I always think that intuitively we we all have intuitive abilities to tapping into that as you said you did a lot of work even though you already you know knew you had this um other people i think can do the work and tap into their intuition and become intuitive um and we all in some point you know we all think oh i instinctively this or i instinctively that so we all have that within us you know and so i don't think you know being an intuitive is a bad word because it is a word that it, uh, describes what a human being is capable of, I think. Intuition is great. Yeah. And, I mean, I can look at your eyes and I know you're intuitive. I know you're sensitive. I know, so I can read different things. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. <laughs> people are a little too buried under things that happen, yeah. trauma. All the stuff. Yeah. Whatever lies they're telling themselves, whatever they don't want to see, whatever they don't want to face, if they don't want to face their power, if they don't want to face their inner child, if they don't want to face their wounds, if they... Then they block they, themselves, right? To, to not have, not to tap into that. Because it's a protection thing, somewhat. Yeah, it's not kind deal. of like putting a concrete wall, you know, it's kind of like sealing a wall and then you have to take those, what are those machines to, yeah, to sort of yeah, jackhammer the, uh, in. Yeah, jackhammer down, which is why what you do is so valuable mm -hmm. because you can help people, like I was saying at the top of the show, to tap into their soul and to do the work that is blocking them from being who they truly are meant to or want to be. And Who they truly are underneath already. Right. Uncover themselves. That they have all this garbage built up in front of them as a block. Or beliefs so, from people that have told them who they are, too. Yeah. Oh, I know. Isn't that the worst? Mm -hmm. That you're not enough. You're not this. You're not that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we I've done shows on this on where people actually buy into, the which only escalates the fear, which only, you know, paralyzes people from moving forward with their life and their passion. I had a and lot of abuse and trauma that I had to work through as as on top of all that other stuff. I had to work through a lot of stuff. So. And it's very commendable that you did the work with all of that stuff you had dealt with being p passed around to foster homes and you know you, it could have gone a whole different direction a which hundred, it does a lot for uh, people in those situations i, I witnessed it sure yeah. i i witnessed it i i know that world very well so you give yourself um, a lot of credit here for breaking through I, Thank you. I also give credit to whoever is guarding me or guiding mm -hmm. me. And, you know, it's not, I mean, I didn't do that alone. And I also feel like um, it was more uh, my spirit. So I feel like your spirit is built in a certain way, it's wired in a certain way. Mine is wired not to give up. 
<laughs> well, I, 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 well, that's a key to many things, and right? I, of and course, I you would, want to give up yeah. a million times. Of but. course. What's the, the easy way out? But in the end, it's really the more difficult way. If people understood sure. that, they would do the work, mm -hmm. which would in turn becomes the easy way. You Can know. we talk about the work a little yeah, bit? Yeah, so, yeah. I would like to. See, so, I wish there was another term for doing the work because it just sounds like in school, do the work. Yeah. But when it's really so unbelievably magical and beautiful. I know that sounds so airy-fairy, and I try not to sound super, even though I love butterflies and love, I try to hide that, uh, you know, with myself. But um, but it's but so, it, go ahead. I, I go was going to say, because now you are what is known as a, a clairvoyant coach, mm -hmm. and you're helping people through what you, helping them get rid of all that and doing the work, right? Get, getting rid of all those walls that they've put up that are keeping them from being able to tap into their true, to their true being. 100%. So let's talk about exactly that as what a clairvoyant, clairvoyant, I'm having trouble with my words, Dave, in your name, um, coaches mm -hmm. and how it works mm -hmm. and what it is not. How's that? That's great. So, um, because, uh, you know, I have to grow and evolve with, with all the work that I do just as everybody else is growing and evolving. It's not like we get to just get to a point and it's like, oh, yeah, our work is done. It's never done. No. But once you get into um, sort of the uh, uncovering the mysteries, researching, um, treasure hunting, um, diving deep, the unknown. These are these are the things that you can't be afraid of in order to get to a deeper part of yourself. And I think that people have lost any kind of magic in living. They've gone into the mundane. Mm -hmm. They've gone into fear. They've gone into watching the news. Mm. They've got it's two two two. See what I mean by, oh. by magic? <laughs> That's balance. Yeah. It's, they've gone into. Um, and it's sad because it, it's they've gone into believing that nothing magical or beautiful can happen. They've given up in yeah. some ways. Yeah, a lot and of so doom and gloom. Mm -hmm. And then they walk around fed. like zombies going into nine to five. So there's no creative um, energy involved in that. Because once you tap into yourself, you're like trying to do all kinds of things, projects. What can I do? What can I do? Mm -hmm. and that's where... We want the energy. That's why we're all, that's why we're trying to wake people up. And so, so how do you help people do that? Exactly. Okay. So with clairvoyant, so as a psychic that, you know, which I am for a long time and always cringed at the, the word, you know, psychics are people, people call up in crises. They call up in, I mean, people did call up for coaching, but a lot of people call up because they just want to know that their life is going to be better. Mm -hmm. They want to know where know. they're buying their house, who they're marrying. And I give, I can give them all that. But I can also cut into laser beam into your soul. And so I can see what blocks or what's happening. So Clairvoyant Coach came up due to me sort of racking my brain, reinventing myself for like six months creatively. In It really grounds the word clairvoyant. So it brings it into having some substance Clarity. instead of, yeah, instead of, I went to a psychic and she told me, and now I can just go off and I don't have to do anything. Yeah, it's like just going to happen. It's magically going to happen. Yeah. The magic is really in the, the work is the magic. The magic is the work. Oh, I love that. That's what you really have to get into. It doesn't just magically happen. happen. Um, so uh, it's, I'm, I'm coaching one a person to access themselves to dive deep so that they can uncover their truth to clear and purge layers of themselves to get back to who they are mm -hmm. so these are the gods the magicians the mystics the healers we're all of those things i look at people as characters creatures like it's just more fun that way too um and then they can get into discerning all these crazy messages that are out there and all these people that are now reading and kind of just throwing stuff out instead of all, you know, we've done a lot of research. We've done a lot of work. We've faced a lot. I, I have faced so many paranormal things. I don't know if people would survive, 
But for me, it's fascinating, not mm -hmm. fun at the time. It might be a little scary or not. But this is a grounded approach, just like you would have a health coach, um, an athlete train you every day. Right. And so an it's, example would be, let's say you can't get into a relationship and you don't know why and you just keep banging your head against the mm -hmm. wall which a lot of us do yeah i've had the relationship experts on the show talk about the things that we have to stop doing and the thing the other shifting mindset around how to manifest a relationship you know because there are certain but you can't manifest that... anything until you've cleared the trauma that you don't even know is in your body about the fact that you don't like the way your father treated your mother and then to compound it you don't want to be your mother so you've got all this resistance, but you're trying to get a boyfriend. So, yeah, but the inner part is saying, I don't really want one because I saw what happens and I don't want that to happen to me kind of thing. Yeah. That I mean, you're stopping yourself. Completely. You're your own worst enemy in that respect. You can't get anywhere. Keep, yes, exactly. There's you're no not going to make in the progress. Car. You're going to yes. be in Groundhog Got Day you. every yeah. day. And so people get <laughs> oh, insistence. I understand Groundhog Day. <laughs> oh, we all do, trust me. It's, yeah. kind of, it's, pretty, it's pretty funny, oh, yeah, but yeah, not yeah. funny. It's a good way to um, put it. <laughs> but, but it is really like Groundhog Day yeah. if you're just doing the same thing over and over. And so this really cracks into um, coaching is not just like a one hit on the vape kind of thing mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, it's more of, okay, so you, we, we talked about this and now you did the inner, I give them homework. Yes. Because they have to access themselves. Exactly. That's I what I love is you get them to access themselves. I can't go in, I can go in and, and see what's there. But I cannot yep. make you fix or yeah. fix any of that. You have to do it yourself. But I am an expert in going very deep. As a mystic, there are no bounds. Right. And so I've done it all and, you know, just had to endure. And, and when your clients do this work, you see eventually, like kind of like how I see muscles growing and, and weight going down mm. and eyes clearing up and skin clearing up and hair growing, you know, those kinds of things I can physically see with my clients when mm. they eat right and exercise. For you, you see the inner person actually start to change little by little by them going home and the ex the, the work you give them they work on that come back my client my and, my clients are thriving yes uh, they're thriving yeah your website proves that <laughs> there's a lot of nice there's testimonials like, yes they're thriving and yeah that's the best reward to this work even though I'm still always doing the work as well, yeah. and I, I happen to love the creative process period in any way. Yes. Whether, and, go ahead. Yeah, um, uh, because it is a creative process, it's, I, I want to talk about the difference between what you do and like somebody going into therapy to work on whatever mm -hmm. they need to heal or unblock. Mm -hmm. What is that difference? How does it differ? Well, it differs in that I am not a certified therapist, first of all. Right, right, I'm, right. I'm a... Uh, magical like i don't yeah, know because a, you're a you, you're getting into therapist. the psychic mystic part of them as opposed to the textbook part of them but textbook part of healing funny enough though i do have a very therapy Intuitive. kind of vibe when i work with people they'll call me and say you're going to be my therapist for four weeks and they just sort of you know because they'd rather not go to the therapist yeah. now it's not a cop-out it's just maybe they feel like they've They've Can tried it, been more. there, and it didn't exactly I, tap into what they I thought would work. Th I think the difference, the biggest difference is um, when you go into therapy, it's very heady. Mm -hmm. It's super heady. And you so you're all in your head, and so are Agreed. the therapists. Agreed. And you have to be in your body. Feeling is everything. Feeling is the key to intuition. Feeling is the key to getting through. Feeling. I mean, and as a kid, the only reason I survived is because I felt everything. Because you allowed yourself to feel. Feel. I find that that's a huge block. People will not allow themselves to feel. I know in my marriage, I was allowing myself to feel, and my ex-husband wasn't. And so 
we, we, were, we were at a standstill. We were like two magnets that were pushing against each other. It's because scary you to have feel. To, you, exactly. you have to be vulnerable. It's very scary. And so you, if you're, you have to be open. And why did I stay open? I stayed open because I was curious just to the nth degree. Curiosity is a good thing. And so with that, bravery came. But I completely understand people going numb. I completely understand men not wanting to feel. I completely understand people shutting down. It's hard to be human. It's a hard thing on this planet to just walk around and kind of roll with everything being easy. Mm -hmm. The truth is, it really can be. We've been taught that it's not. Right. We've really been Work taught. hard, get, break through the barriers because there's always barriers. There's always this. There's a, the you're competition. You're no good. You're this. Yeah, you're that, yeah. You're you not know. good enough mm-hmm. because what did their mother tell yeah. them? You know, they're yeah. working. People are operating from old, um, if you want to call them old records that are just running over and over and, and repeat until you a loop. Step out. Yeah, the loop is a big thing. Until you kind of step out of that and clear it. And so it takes, it's not an easy world to navigate when you're trying to clear and uncover programming, which is what has happened. Pre-wired. A- amnesia from whatever, for whatever reason that we are not supposed to wake up. It's, it's hardcore. So that's why there's a lot of us here to assist people in waking up because the planet needs to wake up. I love that. I love the way you. Um, I I love the way you say that. You, you know, to help people wake up and to to assist that you're assisting people in waking up to uncover what they really really can use to their benefit if they get rid of all that. They get rid of that loop. All I of think that. there's misconceptions and a lot of non-education because I think people have, even when I was up for like a lot of shows and they were always like, let's do this and let's do that. And it's like, can we just educate people on what this is? It would really help. Helps them humanity. to understand. Yeah, because they just see our, and are in awe of something that I think is normal. So like even like we talked about friends of mine are just like you just speak a different language, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And to me it was what? What are you talking yeah, it was about? It's normal to it's you. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um but you speak people, a language that can really help people, you know, if they really want to listen to what your language is and but tap it's into fun. it. And yeah. it's it's actually fun. It's not we cleared the way for all the scary stuff. Trust me, we've done a lot of the work on fight, fighting the dark side for 20 years. Yeah. And it was no joke. And you were saying that we are coming into a 37-year end. Mm-hmm. And we are now because um, you're, you, we were talking about a little bit, um, we pre-discussed what this next three months means until the end of the year and mm-hmm. what people should be doing sort of collectively since we're not working individually unless somebody calls in. I'm going to give you the call-in number. It's 323-843-2826 if you want to ask a question here. But generally, this next three months, what should my audience be thinking about and doing in or- before 2020 hits because that's the end of this 37 37- Seven year cycle. Well, yeah, this is a that was a this is a karmic cycle closing. Also, uh, Saturn, I believe, hasn't been in this position for since the 1500s. So it's interesting because I've always referenced the Renaissance period, not knowing why, but seeing the sequence of the numbers. I've gone back to research Fibonacci numbers and. I research. I'm a big researcher on right. making sure that things check out. Okay. Um, just because of who I am and yeah. just because of the stuff that you get, you're just like, are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, you got to check it out and, and, and see people, where it's coming from. Well, yeah. even people that I've read saying, I really thought you were insane until everything you said came true. And so I'm very used to that. So it doesn't affect me. It doesn't, you know. Um, but so the next three months, so here we are. 2019. 2019 has felt to me like um, like a prep year. Mm-hmm. It's felt like, okay, you got to really like 
get rid of all your old stuff, throw all your old clothes out, mm-hmm. get rid of all the old things of your personality. And even though you want new, you have, still have to do a little bit of work here. It's going to mm-hmm. take a minute. And now we're going into, so we're already into October. Yes. This is going to go very fast, very, very quick. The next three um, months, you're yeah. saying, is going to go quick. And so this is the time to start. A, it's almost like a cleansing period, are you saying, in a way? The big cleansing period was in July. Okay. That was a major. major yeah, you wrote about it because you have, uh, which I'm here, we'll talk about in a few minutes, but you have a great blog that, Thank you, you. that you wrote about what July was. I've, I read that. And, and, yeah. and I think we first talked in July, too. So you were mm-hmm. saying we're in a cleansing period. I was period, going through Which it. helped me. Yeah. yeah. I was going helped through me. the ringer. Yeah. yeah. It just like, because it's just, sometimes it's, the shifts are so intense that you're down doing the work yourself. You can't help anybody else. You have to just do your own work. Oh, right. And to- so that was a, it was a cleansing. And also July was a big time of connecting to lineage. So for me, it was oh. my, my deep spiritual lineage. Oh, cool. Going back to like Egypt and Atlantis and all of where I came from in what I'm here for. Wow. And so that That's- was very deep. It's <laughs> that goes, I just did Ancestry.com to find out what my, you know, lineage was. But I did that in July that by, was, by see? circumstance. So you kind of did the same thing. Yeah. I was in meditation. So it was like 30 pages of notes. But I would like for days, like for hours of yeah. just. I remember you telling me you were up at all ungodly hours of the you night don't sleep. working. Yeah, yeah. You, you're compelled almost. You so, have to do the work. And so that it, re- they, it requires you going in. You can't even help it. Yeah. It's just. It, it's, it's, it's taking you on this journey. Mm-hmm. So for my audience, and it, it being October already, what should they know and what should they be doing for the rest of the end of 2019? Okay. So there's a few things. I wrote some things down also. Let some things download in. So, um, you know, you want. You want to be in a place of more sacredness in your life period. We've come into a place of of understanding that when things are sacred, we take our time. We feel more. Mm -hmm. You don't, you can't be rushing around not thinking and just sort of like, I got to get the decorations up and it's Halloween. Like you can't be in robotic mode. Yeah, I was just going to say you can't be rote. You can't, the the whole groundhog thing. Yeah, you need to be more mindful. Take your time. Understand the whys, the reason, the timings. The Learning your own rhythm, which mm -hmm. people have, that's something they should have been working on as well. Right. Um, Because, you know, they're, running around they've got unresolved things there's fragments of themselves so they've got to like sit down a few things one we have we're in scorpio uh, mercury's in scorpio everybody has to watch what they say it's going to be a little sensitive as far as discussions go it's a lot about relationships right now because Mm. we are in libra and also people have taken a very long time in working on themselves and understanding what they truly need and want in relationships. Right. So don't rush into anything, but also put up some boundaries, like no more playing around with like, I think I'll just like go on Tinder and not have any principles on anything. I'm just going to see who magically shows up. It's more about like, what do you want? Yeah. And with what you Being want, decisive. you need to like put down your laws. What mm-hmm. are your laws? What's the entry? What can they, are they allowed in or not allowed in? Mm-hmm. Do you know? So there's a lot of discernment that has to go on. Oh, I like that. Discernment. Um, you hear that, guys? Discernment. You need to discern and, and put some thought into what you say before you say it. I like that. Yeah, the discernment is for boundaries, for like yeah. whether who's coming into your home who's coming into your wherever they just boundaries are a big thing now um and that will help you trust yourself because i don't feel like people trust themselves like obviously mm-hmm. they're going to different psychics which is also mm-hmm. dangerous what if that psychic tells you you know i could go to one and i'll just be like yeah okay no you know i know you're trying to hustle me or whatever but 
what if someone goes who's people are very vulnerable going in you're you're very open you're very vulnerable you want to discern who you're listening to yeah you know you're not joining and any be cults. able to yeah and not <laughs> jump in so readily that, that this is the, the answers. answers yeah it's exactly. not outside yourself it's always inside yeah no matter what anybody says you always go back to yourself yes and that's Tap what i teach that. people to do so it's inner empowerment lovely. very it's lovely well, I don't want to do the work for them. No. I want to paint or I want uh-uh. to draw. Or yeah. I want to do things too. So it's like, let's get this done. Right. You no. Know? Helping them to understand yeah. that they have the ability to go into themselves. Super important to set up your world right now. What that means is set up your world, your intention, claim what you want. Put a template together. It doesn't have to be perfect, Mm -hmm. but it has to be an idea of what you want. You know, you're sort of like, oh, I love that house. I want something like that. So intention is more just working that way, but also you have to be open to change because there's so much change going on right now too. So you have to be fluid. So a template of what you want what you in your life what's going to make you happy right okay like what is um what are you thinking about what will make you happy what um what does it look like what does it feel like what are the colors around what are you doing so around you are we talking visually like a vision board are we talking more meditative or all of the above you know a couple of things. really good point because it's not just about vision boards anymore it is Mm -hmm. but we are projectors so it's about superimposing instead of looking at the and this is going to sound a little crazy but it's not (laughs) this is actually the way to manifest so if you um the wall is green yeah and you want it to be blue, Mm -hmm. every day that you walk by this wall, you see it as blue. Mm -hmm. You don't see it it as green, but I think I want blue because then you're caught in between Mm -hmm. and then you're caught in between the anxiety. So no, I think I want, I do want. It is. It's a feel. Okay. It's not a think, it's a, it's a being thing. It's like, it's like putting your whole body in because we're getting so much more back into our bodies again, Uh which I'm sure you've noticed because there's so many more physical symptoms. We've been in our heads learning about spirituality for so long Mm -hmm. that it was sort of like, where did, where, where did, where did we go? Where did everybody go? Yeah. Now everybody's coming back and they're like, oh, wait, I'm like in a 3D, even though we live in 5D, but we still have to live in 3D because we have bodies. We still have to do, we still have to eat and- and Take care of ourselves and take care of things and make money and be clean. But the beauty is we sort of have the Disney Channel now on tap where we can just kind of- Go off into fantasy land. Which is really more of your power yeah. than you saying, I got to get a job and be stable and yeah. like listening to all the stuff that we've been told. That we have that to That is where the power lies. That's yeah. why the mystery schools were always kept secret. That's why this information didn't get out there for a long time because it would have been so misused or so misunderstood. Right. It's why it requires so many years of initiation. That last it's, 37 of them to be... Precise, been, right? Well, and healers have been initiated for longer. We've yeah. been always initiated because it's what it takes. Yeah, yeah, you're here for a reason. Um, we're winding down to our last few minutes, so I, I want to ask you, um, I know you have your cards out. Should I we do. work with those a little bit for the it's last fun, few minutes? And want. then I want to um, tell everybody how to find you and how to work with you and how you can work with anybody anywhere in the world and what you've got coming up and all of that Ooh, so they were just jumping out <laughs> they have a little minds of their own yep, they're mm-hmm. jumping out. so this is this is all very um intriguing and um informative to me in terms of the end of this cycle into this new cycle knowing that we're coming into 2020 it almost is it well it is it's empowering to have this energy field sort of come from the inside out to propel you for where 
You know, that's what it's 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 feeling like to me because I feel like I've been building, I've been building, I've been putting some bricks together for the past ten years. Aren't you Capricorn? I'm a Pisces. Oh, close. Pisces. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. you got a structure of Capricorn, but your eyes are Pisces, and that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Of Water course, baby. <laughs> but you had to dilute yourself. You know, it's sort of like I feel like I've melted down to nothing and had to like come back up again. Kind of like those are the kind of yeah visuals. Well, that's usually that's kind of what happens to get over to get mm -hmm. over that hump right you, you sometimes go you gotta down go here through. yeah you gotta go exactly. through you gotta die to be quite honest and just put it really clear you have to die a death and that is what people need to do it's like if you don't die to yourself you can't rebirth Re yourself mm -hmm. in a different way yeah. and people are so terrified to die that that's what you yeah can't status be quo keeps of. them from yeah right, right. So and that's what gets the loop going get it makes the sense. resistance the yeah. running the not nurturing the inner child the not doing the prep work but you have to die to yourself right i'm used to it i like the phoenix so i i die all the time and come back yeah but i'm i'm used to it it's part of who i am yes so it, may, it if it's not part of who you are especially now it's women have to, they're stepping into their power because mm -hmm. it's the divine feminine and the divine masculine. We're not going to leave them out. No. So we both have both in us, but the divine feminine, the divine masculine have undergone big, big changes and still are right, right now. Good to so know. So it's a lot of self-care, a lot of nurturing, a lot of... Um, and that's, I think the self-care and nurturing has to do, like, with the reason why I have a show, and there's so many podcasts out there right now. I mean, there's oh, podcasts with everything, but there, a lot of it is about health and wellness, longevity. I'm writing a book, Age Young, all about longevity and all these things, well, every, from every facet. In Uranus and Taurus, which I wrote about before it happened, which is here for seven years, is it's going to blow up these industries the the wealth industry the the beauty industry the health and wellness industry mm -hmm. it's like it's the i call it i i called it in i uh, entitled it a little bit of mad genius because and, and, it's and so blow it up and in, just, so, just from my own in personal amazing, in a good way okay, in a good way good. but also a lot of people are jumping on you can see there's going to be a lot of There'll be a lot of cults that people are. Oh, okay. There's going to be so, always. This is what I'm talking about. Stuff the discernment. that sucks you in. That is yeah, a little or, bit extreme. Yeah, yeah, or believing things that yeah. don't need to be believed. Yeah. You need to learn how to believe yourself. Right. And your own truth. So you your own see inner essence. where you can pull back if something's coming well, your at you power, from the wrong way. Yeah. It's your power. So of you're going to be able to move how you need to move in that. Yeah, which um, you know. So we are down to our last few minutes. Do we have time for cards? Yeah, okay. Whatever, just so what like should ask, we do here? So do we... We ask whatever you want to ask. Like, so do, you want do a I collective ask... collective thing? Yeah. Do you want like should, a... Should I... Do I we have time like for, for that? the well-being of yeah, people. people. Yeah, people. Yeah. Okay. Like what should we do for October? What should we do for November? Right. What should we do for December? Or what okay. can we expect? Okay. Kind of. Like, All right, so be... let's do that. Okay. Is so what do like, we... Am I too close? To no, you're good. Okay, so hang on. So we'll do um, October 1st. Okay. Let's just see. And when I read, by the way, sometimes I use cards, sometimes I don't, because I'm able to tap in and just go in okay. to different... So we're really down to about 120 seconds. <laughs> so... Okay, so October is about getting your balance. I'm going to do this really fast. Okay, which is my show, Balance Life. November is about uh, love, happiness, self-care. Um, really, what is going to make you happy? Um, so um, not being insecure, not allowing the insecurities in November to come in. So no more of the family issues and getting insecure. That's right, do your own thing. Make yeah. yourself happy. Go see friends. Don't go home if you're going to, like, have a problem. Um, October is really about us being victorious, about getting over, doing things the old way. It's a lot about money. It's a lot about negotiating. But it's really balancing more of a win for us to go forward. So it's more of balance your life and get the template down now. Let go of what you need to with the uh, the, 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 the knowing that you will 
be successful and you will accomplish what you need to. December is going to be all about relationships somehow, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of a build up to all of that. Um, and so I think by December, there, there's a huge change in feeling. There's beautiful partnerships that come together. Um, there's a different feel in the world. So it's going to be interesting. So don't buy into the news and all of that. If you stay in the magic of what needs to be created, mm -hmm. which is what we're supposed to be doing, and people stay on that track, we'll do good. Because there's power in numbers. I love that. That gives us, uh, you know, a place to kind of wrap it up. Mm -hmm. So what, I, and this is just beautiful. And it, this is hope. I think yeah, it is. I think it's, you know, giving people but not guidance hope. and like, yeah, like, no. Uh, but a with a purpose. Yeah, mm -hmm. and very um amenable and something to grab onto. It's it's um basic and concise and you I love it. You always need something to grab onto now just to work through. Yeah. Like when you're going to make a meal, you pick one thing and then you're like, "Okay, what should I add to this? Right. Or, you know, oh, so I love how you compared making a meal to, to what you it's can do very, in your life. Yeah. Right. It's very intuitive like how that. How you collect those ingredients for yourself. I love it. Mm -hmm. So how can people reach you if they want to get individual reading, work with you on um, clairvoyant coaching? Um, and they don't have to want to be a psychic to read with me. No. Like they can read, but it's, yeah. I'm, it's really people that are going to benefit in some way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I have so many different, I have wealth codes now, beauty codes. I have diff, I have so many different coaching. They, they just keep kind of coming in. Right. Um, so it's my site is uh, kimlovemuse.com. Kimlovemuse.com. And my it's up on e the screen. Yep. And my email is uh, kimlovemuse at gmail.com. Perfect. So you should reach out and get in touch now, um, Kim, or... Nuria. Nuria. <laughs> I know I have to give people Nuria. used to the name. I, and you have yeah. a really pretty logo over that, which I'm going to put up post-show. Um, leave us with some final words of wisdom, some final thoughts, one final line. Let me just ask. I would um, challenge yourself to really feel what it's like to live your life to really live now be very um alive alive in your senses i love that i just feel awaken like that's your important senses. awaken them mm -hmm. feel it feel All everything mm -hmm. no matter good bad and different whatever because it's going to pass but feel it so that you're alive live life get out and live it's beautiful i love it and i have mm -hmm. to thank you for taking the time out of your day in the middle of a tuesday to come I love be with these. me today and help and you're helping others too which is so important yes i want to thank you. you for joining me today again okay. i am the second and fourth tuesday of every month i will be back in two weeks so i'm going to leave you with to keep finding those conversations that connect to a healthier you, just like the one we had today. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Naria. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.